Welcome back. It is me, Sandra McEwen, and I am here to do a live video whereby we take our wires that we have made in our last video. Here are just some of the samples. I think this is the one that this is the one that we made in the last video. And you can see we have lots of look at this little guy with this little face. So we have a ton of these little wires and they're just hanging out on paper. And in this video, we are going to, and also I have all these bases that we made in, well, I made them not in front of the camera, but we'll do a video about making these bases. Uh, but let me just tell you what I did to the bases to get them ready for us to transfer the wires to them. Um, let me just find one. Here's kind of a large one, and here's the little wires for that. We've got this right here. And so what I did with the silver was I, uh, before I put any enamel on, you can see the enamel there, I soldered a little, this is going to hold the, this is going to be a pendant, so it's going to hold a chain there. All these other pieces are um, cufflinks. And you can see I've soldered a tiny little cufflink binding on, and here's the actual binding. And so when the whole piece is done, I'll just rivet this cufflink binding in the back. And I use eutectic solder to solder these on. You can use hard solder, uh, which has, I think it has a slightly lower melting temperature, but I have really good results with eutectic or IT solder. They're two different things, but I like the eutectic. Um, and I'm I meant to look up what the melting temperatures was of all those so I could be like super smart, uh, but I forgot to do that. So rest assured, uh, if you use eutectic solder, uh, you will not melt it in the kiln. So you will have no trouble with enameling. But the one thing about eutectic solder is uh, the enamels don't really play well. So whenever I solder something on the, the back of something, I always uh, use a black enamel or an opaque enamel uh, to cover up any kind of... Um, because if I use like a really pretty blue when it touched the solder, you know, it might turn kind of nasty colored. So anyway, so I have soldered the pieces on there. And then I put two coats. I sifted two coats of black enamel on the reverse. It's kind of like my go-to um, reverse enamel. I think it's, and it's unleaded as well. Because if you're going to be soldering a lot, this is right here, 1998 soft black unleaded. It's kind of my go-to uh, counter enamel. Uh, works really well. And then I sifted one coat of enamel on the front of each piece. And I used clear for some, depending on the colors of what we're doing. Um, I tend to kind of, like I use yellow for these two pieces. I don't even know if you can tell. But I kind of feel that the clear has a tendency to discolor sometimes after a lot of firings. And so I've had a lot better results if it's going to be a solid color, uh, sorry, this one's yellow. This has a little bit of purple. Um, I don't even know if you can tell. Um, and then I did blue, which looks white, but I just, it has a really good clarity to it. And I'd rather start with the color I'm going to end up with than have kind of a layer of clear, which, which could be kind of a wild card later on. Um, some of these pieces are going to get a layer of gold leaf down like this piece you can't really tell which we'll be doing in a second so anyway that kind of sets the stage for where we are i've also done a little bit of filing around the edges but i haven't gone crazy because you can see there's some you know as you sift things on the edges kind of you know they get stuff on them again and so the last thing we'll do is clean up the edges at the very end all right so let's start with something super easy uh, let's move these out of the way. I have this piece right here, and you can see because I have, I'm, using, I'm working on this because I liked it to lay nice and flat. You could definitely work, because you know, it'd be hard to have it flip around like that. You could work on a trivet, absolutely, but I tend to like knock these trivets over. It's not quite as stable. So I'm gonna set that right there. And let me tell you what we're doing. This is gonna be a nice easy one because here we have this piece right here it's just filled with wire work little swirls right there so it's going to be the easiest thing that we can do and i'm going to get a little bit of this is called clear fire let's see which is basically just an acrylic medium here is the 
clarifier A1. That's the least strong of all the clarifiers. Um, it's an acrylic medium that it just acts as kind of like a glue and it'll burn away in the kiln, but it keeps the wires in place while you're working with them. And so I put a little bit of that in here. There's different holding mediums, which we can talk about now or we can talk about later. Uh, but this is kind of my go-to. There's also A3, which is slightly stronger, uh, which is also good. And then there's also something called Blue Stick, which I don't have in front of me, uh, which I use for really, really intricate pieces. It's like, it's kind of a blue color. And if you're doing, if you really want a good holding, I would use that. But I don't use Blue Stick for um, everyday work because there's it doesn't always uh, burn entirely cleanly away. So I kind of... I, I trust the clear fire. Trust in the clear fire. All right, and so the other tool we're really going to use is my trusty, lovely tweezers. So anyway, let's get started. So really what we're going to do right now is we're just going to paint. And you can dip, you can paint. Sometimes you want to dip the wires in here, but when I'm just doing a lot, I'm just going to put a nice little puddle right there. And you're just going to be amazed at the excitement of this one. We're just gonna pick them up. And you can dip them in if you want, but I'm not going to. And I'm just going to stick these all. And obviously with like this super simple thing, it's pretty easy to get them all in at once. But you can see like everything's kind of moving around. So I kind of, and with these ones that are just like all swirls, you can kind of play with them as you go along. Pick two up stick it in like that doom to doom and obviously you want to make sure everything's flat and it's kind of hard to see what's going on but I'm gonna stick these little things right here this is gonna be a blue piece oh see it doesn't even see I always make more because I make more than I need because you never quite know when you're gonna fill something in kind of scooching these over if you're going to be able to fit every single one of these pieces in. There we go. Oh, and this is live, so if you have questions, I can see them and answer them live because technology is just lovely. So look how easy that one was. I might even be able to squeeze one more of these in. Maybe one of these right there. It's not... Oh, there we go. See how it's nice? Everything is flush there's nothing coming up and so I've stuck that in and before it really dries I'm going to kind of scooch this out of the way and I have some powdered enamel and let me bring that over here this is powder enamel it is kind of my go-to blue base it's either H or N55. They changed it. I think it's now N55. Uh, I'm not going to say that word live. You know Mia enamel. Love this color. It's a beautiful pale blue. When it, this is the actual, this is my sample strip. So you can see it's the palest blue. And so I put it down. If it's going to be blue, I'm going to use this as kind of my sifting medium. It does have lead. So I would normally be wearing a, a, a little mask, but I'm sacrificing a little bit for this just so I could talk but I've sifted it so there's not a lot of dust coming out and with this when I'm sifting it I am going to get a little trivet I'm going to set that right there and I'm just literally going to just put a little bit that's all you need see just three little doop doop doops and there's just enough glass on the bottom that and I sifted some more in that when I put that in the kiln it's just going to like glue it all together. So we're going to set this one aside because I can't really, my kiln's on the other side of the room and I don't, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to show you any kind of actual enameling in the kiln. Uh, but that was a super easy one. And so basically start easy and you can see I had an extra one, but I'll just save that because chances are when I'm doing another one, maybe I maybe didn't make enough curly cues. So I'll save that curly cue. Maybe I need it on this one. Um, but let's move on to something that's a little bit more fun. All right, I'm gonna bring this back. Um, these ones with the gold, let's see which one. Oh, how about 
we've got these gold pieces right here. These, well not this one because this one's going to have a blue background, but these two, let's see our little, look at our little faces right there, and then I have these little round ones right here. These are going to be red, and reds look beautiful when they're enameled over a uh, a gold foil like a 24 karat gold foil so before I put the wires down with these I'm actually gonna put a layer of gold leaf so let's do that all right I'm setting that aside and still we're, we're working out the, the logistics of these whole live things but I've kind of like pre pre done some things like here's my the thing that I used to cut this out and by the way I think somebody asked last week I make these little things in Illustrator uh, because I have that skill and I have Illustrator, Photoshop, uh, but a vector-based thing to make these simple shapes and print them out is something that works really well, but I'm sure you could use any kind of vector-based program or just trace it out yourself. And let me get my gold leaf. And this is, oops, here's the gold leaf that I'm going to be using. And I hate to even bring this up, but they discontinued this. This is the GF3 um, gold leaf that I got from, I think I got it from Thompson Enamel. They've discontinued it. I have like a 12 by 12 inch sheet of it, so I'm going to be using it until it's gone, and then I'm going to go see what other kind of gold leaves are on the market. I actually did order, they have a gold leaf, a GF4, which is apparently a little bit thicker, which I've ordered. And I'm going to see if I like that. This is pretty, it's not as uh, thin as like a traditional gold leaf. Like you can see, it's, I can pick it up with this. Um, it's not just going to completely disintegrate. So it's thicker than the gold leaf that you would use for gilding. Um, and this is, I think, 24 karat. Um, or at least 23, 23, 24. It'll be good. Um, the easiest way to cut this, there's actually two ways to do this. Um, I'm going to do kind of the, I'm going to start with like the fancy way, which is kind of go for broke, which is, I love to go for broke with this. Um, the easiest way to, to cut this is to kind of like stick it between, oops, two pieces. There we go. So I've sandwiched it between this piece of thing, regular paper, because if you try to cut this gold leaf with regular scissors and no paper, it's just, it, it, it is going to fall apart, but I'm going to Basically, let's get rid of that first. I'm gonna waste a little bit of it for the sake of that. And basically, I am just gonna cut this shape. All right, actually, I need to not look in the, I need to look at what I'm doing and not at my phone while I do this. And this, works for when you have like a real easy shape like a circle it doesn't necessarily work if you've got a complex shape like that little devil um, because there's kind of a certain amount of finessing of getting it to attach um, let's just flip that over so you can see it's right there and i've got my my little thing right there and the easiest way it's, it's almost just like gilding a regular thing if you've ever done any kind of gold leafing. I'm going to I'll see if I can do this. This is like, I shouldn't even have like said, oh, I'm totally going to be able to do this in one thing. I'm putting some of this clear fire down and then I'm going to pick it up with my brush. Make sure that there's no paper attached to it because I've done that like so many times. And I'm just going to set it in place. And just gently kind of like floof it. Floof is a word that is a verb for getting the air pockets out. Oh, I invented a word. There we go. And so that is certainly the easiest. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sift, um, before I put any wires on top of that, I'm going to sift some clear on and fire it. Um, and then after it comes out of the... Oh, we have a question. Melissa, hello, Melissa, says, on your last demo, you said you roll out your own wire on a rolling mill about how thin do you roll your wire? Well, this is a question that is come up a couple of times and I don't really measure it. I roll it based on the thickness of what I want. Um, here is um, the bases. I use two sheets of um, 
20 gauge fine silver. And so I have a piece of fine silver that's 20 gauge because I know that this interior is the width of one 20 gauge sheet. And so I have a little scrap of 20 gauge silver at my rolling mill. And because I just want my wires to be ever so slightly, just ever so slightly taller, but not much, because you know, we see we put some, some clear down already, so they're gonna be kind of raised. We don't wanna waste a lot of, of wire, especially with the 24 karat. So I'd make it exactly the width of one 24 karats and I just eyeball it. Um, I don't think I have any wire in front of me, but that is um, how I decide. I'm kind of an intuitionalist uh, about that. But it's better to have all your wires be different thicknesses, wait, different heights. Oh, I'm gonna backtrack. The same height, but different thicknesses. And that way, um, if all your wires are the same height, it's really e it's much easier when we get to the actual enameling, which I promise we'll do next week. Um, you'll see why it's important to have them all the same height. Uh, but just a, a hair taller than what you need. And if I were doing straight up cloisonne, you know, I guess at that point, I, I actually kind of tend to make them the width of 120 gauge sheet because it seems to be a nice depth for enameling in general. That gives you a lot of depth, but not so much that you're just putting a ton of clear on at the end to build it up. All right, so that answers that question. Thank you. And let's see. Oh, we were gonna do, uh, one of these ones that's a little bit uh, for the gold leaf, if it's, I could probably cut that out and put it in, but I'm not going to because sometimes you have a different shape and it's hard to cut out the whole thing and put it on as one thing like that. So what you can do is I'm gonna fold this over and get my scissors. And I'm just gonna make a lot of little squares of gold leaf because you know it's all gonna melt in the kiln as long as I don't like put a ton of gold leaf on top of a ton of gold leaf if they're just ever so slightly here's where it gets fun I'm gonna make a mess but it's sparkly which I love the gold leaf I just love gold oops let's see if we can do this and I would have been a lot more careful if I weren't live Oh my goodness, I wouldn't have done this how it's all bunched up like that. But so you can see I get a lot of these little delicious, I can eat them, they're so good. Let me set this gold leaf aside. Oh, I tore it. Oh, oh no. And when it's gone, it's gone. Anywho, it will be fine. And what you can do with all these little things is, I've, you know, they've kind of like all fallen apart down there. And what I'll do is I'll put some of these, this is the clear fire again. And I'll just pick up individual pieces, let's see, with my brush. And I will just, it takes a lot longer to do it this way, but it's perfectly valid, especially when you have like a complex shape or if you just want to have it in just a small portion and you don't want to put gold leaf over the whole thing. And this is where you have to make sure there's no paper on the bottom because sometimes the paper sticks. And then when you stick it in the kiln, it pops up and burns away. And you'll only do it one time before you start checking a lot more carefully to make sure. And I'm just overlapping them a touch. Oh, there's a piece of paper. Oh, well, we're not gonna do that. In fact, it's almost good to just have, you don't wanna have them overlap so much that they flake off in the kiln because you wanna have, you always wanna have some, it talk, you know, touching the glass. And so there is that. And so I would spend the next five minutes and finish that, but I'm not gonna do that live because that would probably be very boring. Well, maybe not, who knows? Let's do some more wires because I know this is pretty simple what we're doing today, but it's one of those things that um, you spent all this time making these wires. Um, you really wanna take the time and make sure that they are you know, properly you know, in place and they're not sliding around. And you don't have to do all the wires at one time. Let me find, let me do one of these. This is gonna be a cute little, I'm making three of these. You can see it's gonna have, it's just a kind of a, a floral pattern. You can't really tell, but um, let me move this out of the way. Let me save this. And oh, don't worry, I'm saving this gold for later, but I'm getting it out of the way. There we go. Um, we'll do this one last one, and this is gonna be a quicker quicker video. So, and I've got my little thing. 
and that is, let's do one of these. Oh, and I forgot to say that I actually put some texture, before I put the, the glass down on the front, um, I, I put a lot of texture down. Like with this one, you can kind of see I did, and it'll really show up. It's hard to see when you just have the first layer of glass there, but I did, I, I etched a little stardust pattern. And with that, I mean, I didn't use any fancy tool. I just used um, this scrod uh, to put by hand to put that on there. So that was one thing that I forgot to tell you earlier, but it's very important. It's not very important. You don't have to add any texture. And I didn't put any texture on the pieces I was putting gold leaf down for obvious reasons because the gold leaf would cover any texture. Uh, and the gold leaf is a little too thin to really texture, but maybe that GF4 gold leaf that I've ordered will be thick enough that you could texture the gold leaf. And so I'm just putting this right here. And when I do a really complicated piece, I you don't have to put all the wires on because you can see that things kind of shift around. You could get your main wires in place, fire those, and then put the second, or even do it in three. I mean, when I did a huge, um, one of those bigger pieces, I, you know, three, four times, as long as you don't over put so much enamel down, you know, that you fill it up. Uh, less is more when, when you're sifting that. And I've lost my, oh, here they are. So basically, um, and this is also one of the things, I've put some down, but it's also, I like to kind of dip as well to make sure that this is good. But like with this piece, I mean, I probably would do it all at once. But what you can do is, because I don't want things shifting around so much, I want to make sure that this is exactly in the middle. I would be very likely to just make sure that these are perfect, sift a little bit of the enamel on there, fire it, and then come back in and put all these in. Because then if this middle piece is right there, um, let's see if you can see it. Oh, sorry, was it off camera? Um, it won't be scooching around when I'm trying to put these exterior pieces in. So I would definitely fire that in place. And um, let me just go ahead and sift some of that. That's the yellow, you can see. Um, I also use a, a nice green, but since I was trying to keep it a little simpler. Um, and remember for sifting, I do sift on a trivet and do wear a, a mask. Do as I say, not as I do, but I seriously, uh, and like I said, with these sifting colors, I've, uh, pre sifted them. So they're not straight out of, um, of the jar. I've taken them and I've sifted them through um, a sifter to get the fines out. Because uh, if you don't do that and you just sift it right on, it could be a little bit cloudy. But we can talk about that. Oh, we have another question. Terry Brake, is the boil gold going to be fired onto silver sort of like kombu? No, no, not at all. It's going to be sandwiched between layers of glass because you can see here's the one that I just put on. And here's, actually, where's the other one? Well, close enough. Uh, and this one, there's a layer of glass down first. So it's always sandwiched between glass. So I put a layer of glass down, I've put the gold, and then I'm gonna sift more glass on top of that, fire that, so it's kind of like a, a gold, delicious gold sandwich. And then I'm going to then put my wires on top of that. So there's always a layer of of melted glass between all the components. You never want to have the metal touching the metal uh, because it's the glass that's holding it together. Um, and I, was, I, I had been concerned when I first started doing this thing where I did the, the solid piece that it wouldn't be enough. Um, but there's a lot of micro tears in here that you can't even see. And so it's not gonna flake off, it, I, at least with these smaller pieces. Um, if I were doing a huge piece, um, I would probably do you know, small pieces of, of gold. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. All right, so anyway, let me just go ahead and sift this. And remember, seriously, did you see how little I did? Because that's the one thing when I have students, they're like sifting, 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 and then it's like eight pounds of enamel in there. Uh, less is more when you're sifting. And also you can 
take this time until you put it in the kiln. You can always adjust it and make sure it's in the center. Um, and the other thing that we're going to do before we put this in the kiln, which I'm not going to show you today, uh, is you want to let it be dry. Let it dry 20 minutes, put it under a heat lamp. Um, some people set it on top of their kiln, which I don't do anymore because um, my kiln has a lot of static electricity. And I did that one time and I went to go, I'd, oh, I'd spent like an hour putting these wires on this piece and I shuffled over to the kiln and I just was reaching out to put it on top of my kiln and it was like this tiny little spark and I went boop and the whole thing just like flew the whole way across the room and um ended up having to rebend all the wires too because I couldn't find most of them it was like a thousand little wires so put things on top of your kiln to dry at your own risk you know I guess it's all about our risk aversion but I usually work on a ton of things at once so by the time I'm finished with all the wires. The first thing is bone dry. Um, so let's see. I think that is everything we were going to talk about. But I was going to show you one thing that I showed you last week that um, I don't remember if you know about this piece right here. Let me see if I can bring it over. Remember the dragon piece? Um, it's not ready to go today. I'm not, in no way would I put those wires on in front of a live audience because this is going to be like some time. Um, but remember, I had made this this base right here, uh, and I was telling you that there was going to be a stone in the middle of it. And I figured out, and I told you how I was going to do it, and I thought, you know, I better get that kind of settled before I get any farther. So here's what I did. Um, I don't know if you remember, but this is a, a little tube setting right there. Here's my little stone. It might be this stone. It might not be this stone. It all is going to be once the colors are done. So imagine that there's going to be a stone in there, and obviously it's a pretty color. And what I did was I took this piece and I soldered, I didn't solder, I fused a little tiny jump ring right there, and I drilled a hole. And so what's going to happen is after I've done the entire enamel thing, and I've completely finished this enamel, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set that stone, stick it through here, you can see, you know, I'm going to cut it right about there and flare it out. So it's just a little rivet um, in the middle of, of the piece. Um, but I wanted to show you guys that, even though um, I haven't, I'm not ready to add the wires to this piece because I'm going to do some pretty elaborate um, scale texture right here. Um, but oh, let me show you the wires for that once again, in case you weren't here last week. Um, here's the wires for this piece. So you can kind of see how that's going to be. All right, anywho, uh, any questions? Because if not, I think we are good to go. And next week, we will be actually, these, I promise you, well, I promise you, we'll see. Um, most of these wires will be all fired into place and we will be actually doing some colored enamels, which should be really exciting because I have a lot to say about enamels. Um, if you haven't guessed it already, I have a lot to say. Um, but. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I will uh, talk to you later. So thanks, and I will see you in another week. And let me know if there's anything you want me to cover that I didn't touch on, and um, I will try to do that. Oh, check out this one. Look. Remember these? This is going to be real cute. There's not going to be any wires. They're just going to be little cufflinks that are like... Anyway, I think they're cute. Oh, one last question. How many layers can you put on? I assume you mean layers of glass. Um, it depends on how thick your layers are. If you go nice and thin, which I always recommend, um, you could, um, I would say, imagine, all right, so there's two coats on the back, and by the time you've got your wires all fired into place, that one's not gonna have wires, but um, you're gonna have about two coats already on the piece. So a coat down, you're sifting a little bit after you put your wires on. I usually do, with the smaller pieces, we'll do two coats, two more coats of color. Um, more if it's a bigger piece and it needs a lot more shading, but for these smaller pieces, two coats of color and then probably two to three coats, usually three coats of clear. Um, so what is that? Two, oh, anyway, however much that adds up to. Seven, eight, who knows? Um, Anyway, so that, and we'll talk about how many coats we can put on next week when we're actually doing the, the real enameling because um, 
there's lots of schools of thought about that. And it's kind of like what I learned and then what I learned I could get away with are two different things. So I will um, help you help yourself to do what you need to do to get the best results. Oh, one last question and I swear then I'll be done. Do you fire the base coat before you put on the leaf then fire the top coat separately? Yes, every coat of enamel gets fired separately. So I sifted a little bit of the clear enamel down, fired it, let it cool obviously, and then I put the, the gold leaf on, sift, I'm gonna sift a little bit more on top of that, I'm gonna fire it, let it cool, and then I'm gonna add the wires. So, all right, sifting better than wet packing. I like to sift on top of my wires, but that'll be the last time we sift. I don't love doing too much sifting because I do work with leaded enamels and it's not good to be sifting them left and right. Um, but so once I've got the wires on, I switch entirely to wet packing. I know that some people wet pack their wires in place and I've tried that, but um, I like to have a little bit more control with my colors. And sometimes if you're, you have to choose the colors, I'm not necessarily ready to add the, the final colors when I'm wet packing. Um, so I, I like to sift. Anyway, thank you so much. I'm, I'm out. See you next time. Here, like I'm waving. Here, I'll stick my face in. No, I can't. Anyway, thanks again.